In today's video, I'm going to show you how to save data, uh, tabular data from the USGS National Water Information System, and open it up in Excel so that you can do further analyses. I'm here on a gauge uh, landing page for daily data. This happens to be the Cuyahoga River at Jate, Ohio. So I'm going to switch over to looking at the tab separated output format. I want to select the dates I'm interested in. Again, as hydrologists, we often work with water years. Um, so I'm going to do three years worth of data. So in this case, it's going to be October 1st through uh, 2014 through September 30th, 2017. And let's hit go. While this is loading, I should say that before you download the data, you should check to make sure that your record is good, uh, that these are the dates you're interested in, and so on and so forth. But now, because I've already done that for this um, gauge and this time period, I've gone ahead and downloaded it. So here's my text data. Uh, you can see there's a lot of data in here. I didn't uncheck boxes about temperature and turbidity. All I really wanted was discharge, but now I've got all this other data in this text file. So I could back up and uh, uncheck those boxes and have a cleaner file, but I'm just going to go ahead and save this one. All right, so I'm going to right click. I'm working in Chrome. This may be slightly different in your browser and your operating system. The key thing you're looking for is the save as. I want to save this someplace I will be able to find it. I'm going to give it a name. All daily data has the name DV by default um, from the USGS. I was going to give it a slightly more useful name. Uh, note that it's being saved as a text file. So let's hit save and it's downloaded there. So now I'm going to go into Excel. For me, I find it easiest to open text files in Excel if I already have Excel open with a blank workbook. There are other ways to do this. Um, there are other programs. There are other versions of Excel, all of which is to say your mileage may vary. And so if what I show you in this video doesn't work for you, uh, I suggest Google and YouTube as great ways to figure out the quirks for your particular computer setup. Okay, so I'm here in Excel. This is um, the 365 version of Excel. And I'm going to go up to File, Open. I'm going to go to my desktop where I saved that data. And I can see that jdata.txt uh, available here at the, on, on my desktop. Um, in older versions of Excel, other versions of Excel, it may have been grayed out because it wasn't an Excel native file, but you should still be able to click on it and open it. All right, so now I have a choice between delimited and fixed width. The data that comes from the USGS is delimited data, so we're going to hit next. Um, and you can get this preview here of what your data will look like if you choose these options. All right, and so it looks like tab delimited data will work just fine uh, for the USGS data. Um, another really common option would be comma delimited data. Okay, but we're going to stick with tab, so we're going to hit next. Again, you can tweak the way the data is coming in, but I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to hit finish. And now I have the data in Excel. Right? And you can see it's been brought in um, so that each column of data is in its own column in Excel. And that's what we want to do because now we can clean things up, relabel them, and do any further hydrologic analyses like making our own hydrographs or flow duration curves. Um, if you just try to copy out of the, the um, file in your browser, you know, select all this and copy and paste it into Excel, it won't work for you because it'll dump it all into one column. So what you really need is the data separated into columns. But now you're thinking, gosh, what's all this up at the top and how do I make sense of it? So the key thing to look at are these um, parameters and their descriptions. So we can see that parameter 60, 000, 03 is our discharge in cubic feet per second, and it's the mean discharge each day. So we want to go down here, in this case it's line 37, 
and find that code. There it is, 0060-3. All right, and I'm just gonna relabel that um, CFS, which is shorthand for cubic feet per second. So that's our discharge. The next column is going to give us a, another uh, piece of information. See how it ends in CD? So that's the code. So we can look down here now, um, and we can see that the code A means approved for publication, processing and review completed. So other things that you might see in here are revised records or uh, estimated uh, records. So you can kind of scroll through your data and take a look for when those things might be occurring. All right, and then again, I said that I accidentally downloaded and checked the box for temperature data, turbidity data, more temperature data. So I know, based on uh, what I just looked at, that I don't need any of these other columns. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete these columns from my Excel sheet. Right. And I don't need this line down here, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. So now I have a cleaner data set, agency code, USGS, don't really need that, it's all USGS, site number, the date, the cubic feet per second, and a code to tell me whether it's approved um, or estimated data. We can just scroll down here really quick and see if there's any estimated, yep, so here's some, it's approved, but it is estimated. So that means that they have finished their estimation process for this period and um, this is the approved infilling of that data set, right? Um, if you want something cleaner yet, you can go ahead and delete all of this information up at the top. But if you are working with multiple gauges, you might find it helpful to make sure that you have someplace in your file naming uh, something about which gauge you have downloaded from. So now you've got a really nice, clean, simple data set. You can start to do things like convert units. So maybe I want to be in cubic meters per second. So I can write a formula uh, that's cubic feet per second equals our cell that has cubic feet per second divided by the conversion factor, 35.31. Do it enough times and it gets stuck in your head. All right. Hit equal, and now I've got that formula in place. I can copy and paste it um, all the way down, and it will transfer that fo uh, formula all the way down. I can even double click and make it go all the way down on its own. That's a lot of significant digits. I'm just going to reduce those. All right, um, so there we go. There's an example of adding a formula. Um, the other thing we might want to do is just get uh, reorganize our data from high to low or low to high. This can be really useful when you're doing a flow duration curve or a flow frequency analysis. So an easy way to do that is just make sure that your data is all in one big block like this. Click on the data tab and then um, we can go in and we can sort. My list has headers. We can go in and sort by cubic feet per second or cubic meters per second and say sort from smallest to largest or largest to smallest. Now our data is reorganized. We can see that our lowest discharge is 162 CFS or 4.59 cubic meters per second. And the highest discharge that we have uh, chosen in our period re of record is 5,240 and um, or 148.4 cubic meters per second. So anyways, that was a quick tutorial of how to save the data, tabular data from the USGS website, open it up in Excel, get into columns, and start to manipulate it in ways that may be useful for you as you are doing a hydrologic analysis. Remember, your mileage may vary if this doesn't work because you're using a different browser or a different spreadsheet program. Go ahead and do some research on your own and see if you can figure out how to do that or use available uh, professors or teaching assistants if you're working on this for my class or for somebody else's class. Good luck!